Okay, hello, welcome. So let's just show this quickly. Uh, I'm Matthias. I'm working at PinkApp as a senior database engineer in the SQL infra team. So I'm working on the SQL, the TidyB SQL node. I worked with the partitioning code in uh, TidyB. And uh, previously I worked at MySQL Sun Oracle, also with the partitioning code in MySQL, actually. And uh, in between, I worked at Booking.com. Uh, when I left, I managed two of the three uh, MySQL teams there. But now I'm uh, back getting my hands dirty in the code. Let's just go from the very beginning that why are we even using a database, right? So we do have some kind of data, and we want to use it somehow. So I'm trying to visualize that with Lego bricks as data, because you can more or less see each brick as a piece of data. So it has different colors, different shapes, etc. It might even have uh, other attributes like uh, age and cost, etc. And just to start, then you get the Lego from somewhere, right? You might buy a box, you might uh, uh, buy a whole uh, pile of uh, second-handed uh, Lego and so on, and that's how you get it. You need to order it and use it somehow. And what are you actually doing with the Lego? You're probably building something, right? But you might also share the experience with your friends building something together or just side by side or even do business with it. You might trade the Lego or just do collecting, etc. Which basically, yeah, welcome. It uh, basically comes to the first point of using a database. When building, you need to find the right piece every time, right? How do you find the right piece? Do you go through the big pile every time and, oh, I want a red four by four, how do I find that? You probably would need uh, sorting in some way. Uh, databases is good in providing sorting with indexes, for example. You organize things by tables. The table can have different indexes. Uh, you can even do uh, partitioning, uh, put different uh, types of Lego by color or type or anything like that. So that's one way to organize it within a relational database. And here we're talking about picking pieces, basically. So it's similar to the online transactional uh, processing. For example, if you're two people uh, using the same set of Lego, you can only use one piece at a time, right? So you need the acid proportion. And uh, it's easy to represent uh, the data within a table as well. Each table can have its own set of uh, indexes. You can use uh, uh, load into a table, and you can use partition and everything. Then, when you build a bit, you might actually improve the collection or improve your business, right? That's when you do have much more advanced questions, and it comes more into the analytics, online analytics processing. Uh, I'm actually skipping a bit of that. But the main reasons for it is advanced reporting. But it might also be that you want to have more decision support, etc. And you don't even know exactly which questions you will ask. In uh, the transaction part, it's usually fairly easy to know already from the beginning what type of queries you want to run, what type of load you will have. When it comes to analytics, that's the whole idea, basically, that you don't really know what the uh, queries or what questions you will have. So you need to support ad hoc things and new things that you have no clue of uh, how it would be from the beginning. This is how it has looked quite a lot before. You do have the transactional system on one side. You have an analytic system on the other side. and. Uh, some kind of uh, piping and, and uh, duct tape and uh, all kinds of stuff in between. And usually it's even have uh, circle dependencies back and forth. But you really would like this. Everything in a single box. 
easy to manage, you don't have to have uh, expertise in uh, relational databases and re expertise in, uh, trans in uh, analytic system, you don't need to have an ETL team that will always fix the broken things when the uh, application owners uh, does a DDL and changes ta uh, table structures and so, and so on. Because the difference between transactions and analytics is basically is it working on fast changes to small sets of data or is it reading a lot, a lot of data and want to produce some kind of insights instead? Also analytics is different in a way that it's not as time critical usually. You do want to have answers as soon as possible but it's not, sub-second is not usually required as well as Often it's fine to uh, have analytics on yesterday's data or anything like that. It's not ideal, but usually it works. What HTAP, so hybrid transactional analytics processing does, is to combine these. And by combining them as well, not just are you simplifying the whole picture and the system, you also get access to real-time analytics. Uh, normally you can actually do that within the same transaction and you do get a full consistent view over the whole data set instead of uh, an, off uh, an um, analytic system that you may be dump data to every night for example or streaming data. The consistent in between table for example can actually be skewed by some seconds or even hours in some cases by having it in the same system, within the same transaction handling, you get real-time data and fully consistent reports, etc. How many have seen the, the design and architecture of TidyB before? Most of you, anyone that has not seen it? Okay, I can go through it a bit quick at least. So it's a fully distributed system built for the cloud. Uh, all the components are, uh, are duplicated. So if any component goes down, there's another uh, instance of that component that just can continue. So you do have a, a placement driver cluster that uh, knows where the data is placed, how it's distributed on the storage. Uh, you do have an SQL layer that talks uh, MySQL protocol to the clients. It does the parsing, it does uh, the optimizing, and it's actually the coordinator of the execution as well. And the execution goes by actually uh, reading and writing the data into the Thai KV nodes. Or if you have a more analytics queries where you uh, have uh, a lot of uh, scanning or aggregation, then you can use uh, the optional of uh, tie flash, the column store. Uh, what it actually does is distribute data into smaller ranges, and that's something that actually comes into play when uh, I'm finally going to talk about the uh, partitioning and uh, good use cases and so on in TIDB and others. But when you're running a query in TIDB, it means that you can actually distribute the load as well, even for a single query. So you can use indexes or primary key lookups, etc., from the row store, and you can do uh, aggregations and uh, scanning in uh, the tie flash layer, for example. And here you can use just a subset of the columns as well, so you don't need to read all the data, which also speeds up the query. Then we're coming to what table partitioning is. Have you used table partitioning before, anyone? A bit? Is it always working as, as you're expecting or do you always get benefit from it? Okay. Uh, what it actually is that you have a table that you partition, so you're breaking it down into smaller pieces. Internally in more or less 
every database I've seen, it's actually implemented just as a normal table, but you have a, a bit of software layer in between, so you separate the logic a bit, which means that you can handle each partition uh, uh, when you do maintenance and so on, for example. But logically, the client still sees the full table, even if you're breaking it down. And the main benefit, I would say, is it allows partition pruning. So if you don't need to read the full table, you might say that I only uh, is interested in data for uh, this um, month, for example. Then you can just ignore all the data from the rest of the times. And that speeds up uh, queries uh, a lot. I'll come back to, to uh, good use cases for that. It also uh, allows much more efficient data deletion. Instead of running a big uh, delete table, which is tra fully transactional, which means that you basically lock each and every row and you create a big transaction, and then you will clean them up row by row uh, through garbage collection, or if you have an undo log, for example, in uh, different databases. All this is quite resource intensive on the database side. It might be easy for the client still, but the database itself needs to do a lot of heavy lifting for processing all these rows. With partitioning, if you drop a partition, since internally it's just created as an internal table, it's just a drop table. So there's not a big transaction going on that includes all the rows. It's more or less just a blink of an eye. It's still an atomic process, but it's not a transactional process because once you've done a drop table or a drop partition, you can't roll that back. Actually, with TidyB, there's issue, you, you can actually do flashback. So if you mistakenly done that in TidyB, you can actually do a flashback table or flashback partition and get that data back. But that's not actually a rollback. And another benefit is that you get easier data management. For example, you don't need to do an analyze table on the full table. You can do an analyze table on just a partition or a set of partitions, for example. You can also swap data between a, uh, a t full table and a partition, which means that this, when you load data, you might need to uh, uh, massage it a bit or clean it or um, normalize it sometimes. Then you can do that in a separate table first. And then when it's fully processed, you can just swap it into a partition. So it's super fast to uh, move data into a tab uh, partition table as well as if you don't need the data any longer, but you don't want to delete it, you want to archive it, you can do the same. You can take one partition and move it out, and then you can do whatever you want with that, put it on cold storage or anything like that. And normally indexes are done per partition. So you would normally in a partition table not have an index that covers the full table. You will only have indexes within each and every partition. There's, yeah? Why, why the index is designed like this? Sorry? Why the index part is designed like this initially? So that... Uh, uh, it's the same behavior as MySQL, right? Yeah, yeah, MySQL. MySQL. Yeah, so it's much simpler because you already have uh, indexes per table, right? Uh -huh. You don't have separate index handling that's not connected to a table. Yeah. So indexes is always connected to a table normally. Oracle, for example, has global indexes. Right. TidyB actually has an experimental, uh, right. you, you can turn it on. It, I, I wouldn't recommend it yet. <laughs> but. I can come back to that actually, but that indexes are also partitioned the same way. It's good and bad. So it's easy because you're moving data, you're moving the indexes as well. You don't need to rebuild the index. The bad part, I, I'll come back to it because that's a bad use case actually. <laughs> so there are uh, some different uh, types of partitioning. 
uh, as you may know, TidyB is uh, MySQL compatible, so we're trying to do the same as MySQL. Uh, we do not have subpartitioning uh, yet. The most common one is uh, range partitioning. So you would uh, partition by uh, range normally date or an ID. And this is where you really use the delete old data feature, so drop partition. It's more or less only used with uh, range partitioning because you're adding more partitions as time goes and you drop partitions to delete the old data. But it's also very beneficial when you're reporting by range. Uh, if you report by week, month, or anything like that, it only needs to read that data. And uh, you can uh, use it as well when you're doing uh, archiving old data instead of dropping it, for example, or uh, uh, populating the table, etc. List partition is slightly less used. Uh, have you ever seen ossinsight.io? So that's a demo site we actually do have, where we have all of the GitHub events. We even stream new GitHub events there. It's currently a bit more than six billion rows in a single table. There we actually do use list partitioning per event type. So you can easily skip all other events if you only are interested in uh, how many stars some projects has, etc. So it's very beneficial when you do reporting per type. Uh, you can still use it for, uh, uh, for maintenance, etc., and you can do truncate. You can do drop uh, partition as well, but those are less useful. And then there's another type of partitioning, which is uh, hash partition, hash-based, which basically just takes an integer ID, uses a modulus function, and then just do round robin more or less on the, the, which partition to place the data in. It's mainly used for mit uh, mitigating hotspots. So instead of having a single table where you would hit the same spot on the index, for example, or writing to the ex uh, extending the same uh, table data, you can split it into more pieces and uh, divide the load if you want. TidyB actually do quite a lot of this internally, so it's less of need for using this in TidyB, but we do support it. There's, if you know the data better than the generic uh, parts of uh, TidyB, this might be useful. Key partitioning is basically the same. The only thing is that we're generating a hash sum from any column, it doesn't need to be an integer column, and then we're using that hash sum to do a modulus and move things around. And that's basically only used for uh, against uh, hotspots because it's super hard to use that hash sum and modulus of that to predict where things are for dropping or anything like that. That actually brings us to the different use cases why you're here, I assume. And as I probably already spilled out most of it, spreading data rights and access, so self-controlling the hotspots, that's one of the use cases for uh, partitioning. In TidyB, it is not needed often because by default we are splitting and you have the placement driver that even will split uh, data regions if they are hot or merge them if they are small, etc. Partitioning pruning, it's very efficient of uh, decreasing uh, how much data you read, especially for tie flash, because tie flash does not use indexes. It's only in column store. So first of all, you can see that as virtual partitioning because it's per uh, column. And then you add a partition layer that is horizontal. So First, you only read that specific column, and by using partitioning, you only read that uh, partition, so that month of data or that type of data, for example, depending how you're partitioning it. So it's a very good use case together with the column store with TIE Flash. And then 
the data loading and uh, uh, purging of data. Do a drop partition is so much faster and so much friendlier to the database instead of doing loads and loads of deletes and most likely you would actually manage that yourself by batching in smaller batches instead of having a huge transaction and so on. If you're not running TidyB, this might actually also be a good use case, especially for example InnoDB that uses a B tree for indexing. If you have a very, very large table and uh, you don't have as much memory, so you can fit the whole index into memory, then partitioning is useful because in MySQL, in InnoDB, each partition, each index is a part of uh, the different in, uh, partitions as well. So then the index that you're currently writing to is fully in memory. So if you're updating or writing a row, you don't need to have read up all the index for the whole table, you only need to have that index in that partition that's probably already cached in memory. Otherwise, you would most likely have several reads just for updating the index. In TidyB, it doesn't really matter because uh, we don't use uh, a B tree index, we use an LSM tree, as well as we distribute data over multiple nodes. So the caching part of a smaller index is, is not useful for TidyB. And then we do come to the bad use cases. And the main one would be using it for query patterns that actually doesn't mat match the partitioning because then you're just adding a layer and some abstraction and overhead by com uh, using partitioning without getting any benefits, basically. It's just complicating things. Similar with partitioning a small table, there's no gains to do there basically. And basically connected to the first one, using partitioning as a silver bullet, well if I just cut everything up in smaller partitions then I will use partition pruning and it will be faster, right? Well, there are downsizes to it. Uh, one is actually that the indexes are partitioned with the table, with the indexes are partitioned as well, which means that if you're querying the full table without partition and pruning, instead of having one big index for the whole table, you actually need to go into each partition and do an index lookup for each partition instead. And with just a few partitions, that actually is more costly. It has higher impact, more reads than having a very, very large index. And that's also connected then to using partitioning instead of indexes. So here it's the lookup time for an index. It just increases by one step for every hundred times bigger number of rows. Uh, a B tree normally has a fan out of a hundred. So. so going from a hundred to 10,000, it increases by one step. Going from 10,000 to a million, only one step more in cost for an index lookup. While if you partition by 100, for example, it's still linear. So if you increase the, num uh, the size of the data by 100, yeah, then you need to scan, scan 100 times more data. There are use cases where you can combine index and partitioning. For example, when you don't have support for an R index, so in, two-dimensional index, then you can index on latitude, for example, and partition on longitude. There's some special cases, but normally you would really need to know your data for that to be uh, beneficial. And yeah, there's some limitations due to we index the data together with uh, the partition, and that's all partition columns must be included in all unique indexes. And that's including the primary key. So if you have a table that has a in big int uh, primary key and you do have a date column and you want to partition by the date column, then you're actually forced to, you, to add the date column into the primary key if you want to use partitioning. In some cases, the IDs are fully controlled by the application. So 
you don't really need to enforce the uniqueness of the primary key. So in those cases, there's not an issue. You can just continue. But in some t uh, cases, you're actually relying that the database are enforcing the primary key. It's still enforcing the primary key, but you just extended the primary key. So instead of having unique IDs and dates, now you only have unique IDs per date. So know your application, know uh, the use case for it. There's also some features that uh, when developed, they did not include partitioning support. So there might be a slightly mismatch of all, uh, all uh, features and partitioning. Uh, foreign keys, for example, is such a case. So foreign keys together, uh, is not supported together with uh, partitioning tables. And yeah, as I noted, uh, said, we do have an experimental global index, and uh, that's what I'm going to work on next, actually. So hopefully I can stand here in, in the future and present this as well. <laughs>